we started this uh, series life of moses and uh, we took a break in between uh, we stopped for uh, christmas and then um, of course last week uh, pastor steve keller he gave the new year's message and this week we will continue this uh, series life of moses we are in the 18th chapter of uh, exodus 18th and 19th chapters so this is uh, before god gave them the 10 commandments so they have been traveling through the wilderness it's been like 3 months so when they came to this place called refidim uh, that's where uh, jethro uh, moses the father in law there's another name for him it's called uh, reu if you look at uh, exodus i think chapter 6 uh, where we read about him he is the same person jethro he is the priest of midian he comes to uh, moses uh, with, along with his uh, moses wife and uh, and two children and the first verse it says now jethro the priest of midian and uh, father in law of moses heard of everything god had done for moses and for his people israel and how the lord brought israel out of egypt he was living in midian it's a, it's a far away country but he heard what god has done to egypt how these 10 plagues god sent these 10 plagues to egypt how he brought israelites out of egypt he heard all of that and uh, here he says after coming back also he tells moses that i heard whatever god has done now the good news spreads we see here the good news of miracles that god has done in egypt the good news of redemption of israel from egypt it has spread and uh, jethro was a testimony for that also in uh, chapter 18 verse 7 it says so moses went out to meet his father in law and bowed down and kissed him that was their custom of a greeting uh, greeting the elderly people he bowed down and kissed and greeted him we see the respect for elders here so moses uh, he had a great relationship with his father in law usually this this is really odd having a good relationship with a father in law with with in laws for a daughter in law to have a good relation with a mother in law for a father in law to have a good relation with a son in law it's it's odd in in the world but but i think in god's word uh, it is not odd we should have a good relationship with mother in law and father in law it goes both ways i think it also depends on how they treat uh, you know the son in law or uh, the uh, daughter in law but of course the bible says you know as far as it is possible we should be at peace with everyone that includes your in laws so a lot of times we will have a uh, you know conflicts in the families because of the in laws because of the relationship breakage between the in laws but we take an example from here that how beautifully moses had a great relationship with his father in law and jethro uh, how elderly he he was how um, uh, wise he was giving an a, an advice to to moses and we see their relationship in in the way moses responded the way he went and bowed down he kissed and he greeted and uh, he introduced him to everyone so we see the respect for him sometimes it's the respect part that will be missing between in-laws sometimes because some, because the son-in-law doesn't respect the father-in-law uh, father-in-law might mistreat the son-in-law there will be issues of course it's more complicated than the the, the statements that i'm making but but whatever it is we take an example from here about the relationships between in-laws and uh, moving on he was advising uh, advising moses to delegate the responsibility so he had a great time with the uh, father-in-law and then they had a dinner and then the following day 
there were all these people coming to Moses, and whole day Moses was with them, just judging them. Um, so then the father-in-law said, you know, what are you doing? All day long, you are just uh, judging them. You are just giving advices to them. And uh, Moses said, you know, that's what God uh, appointed me for. And then Jethro said, that's not right. You have to delegate the responsibility to others. And uh, he actually gives him um, an advice of how to delegate. You know, he was saying, you have to choose judges who have the ability, you know, th those who are capable men, and then who have the piety, those who are who, who fear God, and uh, who are reliable, who are trustworthy. You have to choose people who have integrity, those who hate dishonest gain. So that was the that was the advice Moses' father-in-law gave him. He had to choose judges according to their ability, piety, reliability, and integrity. Those men who fear God, those who are capable of doing the things, those who are trustworthy, those who hate dishonest gain. Those are the kind of people even God is looking for. God wants people to be used in the ministry, people who fear God, people who are trustworthy, people who hate dishonest gain, people who are honest, who, are, who have the integrity, not like the people who, people like uh, Judas Iscariot, he was stealing, he doesn't have integrity. People who can stand up for him, people who can give life for him. In a book of Acts, as an example, Acts chapter 6, 1 to 4, talks about an example of uh, selecting these, uh, these people who, who are going to help them. Acts chapter 6, 1 to 4. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn the responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. In the early church, there was a, an issue that you know they were feeding the women, old women or the widows, and there was a there was a complaint that they were not feeding properly. So they appointed they appointed these seven people, and then let them do the uh, the serving at the tables. But what kind of people they appointed? People filled with the spirit and wisdom. And even to serve at the tables, they appointed people who are filled with the Spirit. You know, it amazes me when, when I look at these verses, like, you know, God's ministry needs people who are filled with the Spirit. Not like anybody, not a casual thing. God's ministry, however small the task is, you should be filled with the Holy Spirit. You should ask for God to help you, to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And uh, of course, no one can uh, do all the tasks because God hasn't given the same gift to everybody and uh, no one has time to do all the tasks. So that's why God has given different gifts to different people. That's what we read in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12. In the book of Ephesians, we read about this. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So God gave different talents or different gifts to different people so that you know, all those people may use their gifts in the body 
uh, so that people will be equipped or people will do the service of god so that's why we see plurality of leadership in the bible church is not one man show no one person can dominate the entire thing and uh, lead the church in the way he or she wants to do uh, so that's why we read uh, about elders and uh, deacons in the bible there are very specific qualifications given uh, if you look at 1 timothy 3 1 to 13 and titus 1 to 5 1 chapter 1 5 to 9 i'm not reading those but when you have time please go and read those there are qualities that are given for elders and leaders those who are able to maintain their own families well those who are not uh, drunkards those who are not as new believers those who have a good name those who are good with the people uh, so those who are uh, not you know who are not quarreling so there are several kinds of qualities that were listed there uh, so when god gives a responsibility we have to take it very serious just like how we take our jobs that serious we have to take it more serious than that because god is a god who who does who doesn't leave us unpunished if we really may if we really take things casual we see so many examples in the in the old testament when people offered offered incense out of their own selfishness god just burnt them god is a god who is a jealous god so we should be careful when we do ministry any kind of ministry i'm not talking about singing or playing music or anything i'm talking about in general any small task you do in the church you are doing it for the lord that's the first thing second thing is we should ask for god's filling of the holy spirit when we do that task moving on jethro met uh, god through moses you know jethro was say like you know i heard about your god i heard what god has done to you and uh, your people bringing you out of egypt of course moses received hospitality and moses received his wife and wisdom from jethro so we see give and take we see that you know moses was giving the good news about god to him and jethro was giving in return whatever moses needed the advice that he needed so real friends the give and take it's not like okay i don't want to listen to anybody you have to listen to me it's not that kind of attitude so even though moses is the one of the greatest leaders unarguably he is the greatest leader in the whole whole, whole of old testament but he himself had to learn from his father in law so we see his humility there we see how he was accepting advice from his father in law now moving on the chapter 19 talks about about israel before mount sinai i want to show the map that uh, we have seen before uh, is where um, the land of goshen is where they started and they moving on along those red lines uh, they went to refidim and that's uh, close to where mount sinai was so that's the arabian peninsula and mount sinai is where god gave them the 10 commandments and also of course the entire law was given you won't believe 59 chapters in the bible were centered around mount sinai that's the most important place in the life of israelites because that's where god physically actually came down on that mountain and uh, god gave them so many cautions and restrictions before he came if you look at uh, this chapter 19 verse 4 to 6 he gives a promise god gives a promise with a uh, with a condition chapter 19:4 to 6 you yourselves have seen what i did to egypt and how i carried myself now if you obey me fully 
and keep my covenant then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession although the whole earth is mine he was saying out of all all nations you will be my possession you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words you have to speak to the israelites so if you fully obey me if you obey me fully and keep my covenant so he was saying you know if you obey me and keep my covenant you are my treasured possession means you belong to me and no one can take you away that is the exact same promise we see in new testament he made us a royal priesthood he made all the believers as royal priesthood that's what we read in the first uh, peter chapter 2 and uh, he made us as a treasured possession for him we if we obey him and if we take his word at heart he will bless us and that's what is the promise he is giving here and uh, chapter 19 verse 8 shows their their response their resounding obedience of the people uh, verse 8 says the people all responded together we will do everything the lord has said we will do everything the lord has said so they were saying yes we will do what god is calling us for can we say that when god is saying obey everything that i am commanding you obey my word can we respond in saying yes lord i want to obey your word you know that's what we saw in mary's life when the angel came and said you know you will be with a child mary did not understand everything but she said i am the lord's servant may it be to me what he has said that's the obedience god is looking for and here god told them you have to consecrate there is three days of consecration no one can touch even the foot of the mountain god gives gives them a re- restriction god gives them rules of how they should come to him you know when we come to god it will be on his terms not on our terms we cannot just casually come to him in the way we want but he puts a restriction he puts the rules he is a holy god that's why he wants us to be holy uh, even in the new testament we read be holy as i am holy so here god tells them okay i will be coming on the mount sinai in 3 days and uh, you have to wash your clothes you have to abstain from uh, sexual relationships you have to abstain from all sin and uh, you prepare yourself to meet the lord so moses went and told them actually three times god tells the same thing don't let them force themselves to come don't let them come and touch the even the foot of the mountain that's because god is so holy you look at these verses god coming down on mount sinai there was thunder and lightning there was thick cloud and loud trumpet blast and a smoke and fire the whole mountain trembled violently it shook violently there was an earthquake and uh, that's why god gave them three times the warning don't even come close that's because god is holy when we come to worship what will be our attitude toward god a lot of times we treat god as our friend our buddy that's good i mean god is our friend but do we also see god as highly exalted who is so holy that we cannot even come close to him you know isaiah when he had that vision he said woe oh, to me i am undone i am disintegrated god is infinitely holy who can stand in his presence even the angelic beings the four living creatures that that uh, fly and say day and night holy 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 is the lord god almighty 
they cover their eyes with their wings they cover their uh, their legs with their wings such a holy god we have i think we should not lose that reverence when we come to god's presence we should keep that in our mind even not only in the church wherever we are god is holy and that god is watching us we have to be holy in closing just ask ourselves these questions are people aware of what god is doing in your life are they praising god because of what god is doing in your life we are introducing testimony time last sunday of every month we'll have testimonies so if you want to share what god is doing in your life how god has brought you out of that egypt condition into canaan if you want to share how god has redeemed you from your sin and sickness and from the world come and share and uh, as leaders leaders should examine ourselves constantly in the light of god's word and however insignificant your work is in the church we should take it serious because god is holy and when we do his his service we should be holy and uh, we should not take god's word word or god's work lightly we should take it serious so what is our attitude when we come before the lord for worship do we revere him do we take him casually when somebody comes and gives you an advice what will be your attitude jethro came to moses moses was a great leader no doubt but he was so humble to consider and uh, take that advice how is your relationship with your in-laws i'm questioning myself also in this because you know all of us have different kinds of issues but in the light of god's word what do we take from this there is a reason god puts certain portions in the bible god gives these characters so that we can correct ourselves if we hear if we read god's word but we will ne- if we never apply it to our lives there's no use so we have to really contemplate on this we have to uh, think about our lives and see in the light of god's word how we are doing so let's uh, close our eyes and let's pray and and uh, examine ourselves take a minute to examine yourself